Hi everyone, welcome back to Crochet Rocks, it's Tracy and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to make this star-crossed square scarf. Um, now the star-crossed square is a design that I've just come up with and for this tutorial I'm making a scarf but I'm also making a blanket which I will show you uh, some of the squares for um, and what I'm doing with that. So this is the square it's it looks tricky but i believe that a beginner could tackle this so my tutorial will be aimed towards the beginner as well so this one has just a plain border i did kind of put um out asking for some suggestions on uh, one of my videos and a poll asking my subscribers what they wanted and it was kind of very close thing between the straight edge like this or a pico edge and i already have a pico edge tutorial so i figured i would do it plain and then put a link at the end once we get to the border for that pico edge which is nice and simple to put on i also thought it might look nice if i made little pom-poms but i haven't trimmed them yet so because i'm not using them um like this and just put them along this edge so it'd be like snug like that i thought that might look cute at the edge um but to make those it's with this smallest pom-pom maker and it is very very sharp and it's it scratches your hands to do it so um i abandoned that idea but it would look quite pretty and you've got to really want to do them i think so this is made with a three-weight dk yarn that I bought in Poundland. It's the Knitting Essentials Sparkle. They never give you any yardage on their labels, but this particular color is pink or rosa if you're from Spain, but yeah, pink. So I think it's Spain, anyway, it doesn't matter. So that's the one I've used and I use three of these. Um, bearing in mind, I did make these two little pom-poms as well. In fact, I made one little larger one which turned out to be too big. And then I dropped down to this size. Well, very fiddly, very, very fiddly. So I used three of these, but you will definitely need three or four balls to complete your project, depending on what you're doing. Now I've made seven squares for my, uh, my scarf. And that has given me a scarf, which is 50 inches long. And it works out eight inches wide with the two rows for the border that I've chosen. And that was using a 4.5 millimeter crochet hook. Now I did make a four weight um, square just to show you what it would look like with four weight yarn. Now it does come up bigger. Um, if I put this up against it, you'll see that I've, these are the ones I'm making that are pretty colorful for my blanket. And there's a good inch top and side more using the four weight yarn so you know bear that in mind should you make a four weight square that is going to make a wider scarf and longer so um that was made using a six millimeter crochet hook um but obviously if you went for a 5.5 it would snug up a little bit more but if you liked it this drapey because it is quite a drapey uh drapey look but quite airy then that's you can stick with that so I just want to show you as well a couple of other squares that I've made because this is the join that I've used on my scarf. You can see it there. Um, and it is a join that I've used, well, since I was young. Um, I don't think it's got a name. It's a kind of variation on the mattress stitch, but it's actually a lot tighter. And you can't pull that join apart. You can't see the join at all and it makes a nice straight edge there's very little dip to actually um, get over when you're trying to straighten the edge out so that's what it looks like and it's quite easy I will show you how to do it uh, when we get to that stage but these are all of the colors that I've made so far for this uh, blanket, it's just a bit of a rainbow blanket that I decided to make. I will do another tutorial for that, a square swatch, and show you the border that I planned for this scarf, which will now be on that blanket. So, I think I've told you everything. Um, obviously, you can make this as wide, 
shall I say, as long as you want. So if you wanted to do, say, six squares and sew them all together and make it an infinity scarf, five squares make it more of a cowl, or just get a longer one, make sure you have enough yarn. That's all I'll say about that. But this yarn I'm using is the Hobbycraft Knitcraft Baby Brilliance. It's a 100 gram uh, DK weight. I definitely need two for these because six squares, unless you were making an infinity scarf, six squares give me this much left over. But that obviously is not giving me a border. So you will really need two. And plus, you know, some people crochet a lot looser than I do. And the yardage on this, the Poundland doesn't give yardage, but this does, and it is 310 metres. So you'll definitely need two of those to make one this size or even a little bit bigger. Because I will only be using um, this to make my last square for, to make seven. So you could obviously get a lot more out of it. There's obviously a lot more in that of that than the pound line. So I'm just going to clear all this out of the way and get ready to start the um, the tutorial. Okay. So firstly, that noise just now, if you heard that, that's the sound of guns going off in the distance. We're not at war. Don't panic. It's uh, purely that across the water there in Essex, they, um, they explode wartime munitions and test weaponry. So we often get blasts that shake our house. And I waited, thought they'd all finished, and then another one popped in just as I press record. So it's just if you hear that, don't be alarmed. It's just... They're actually quite a long way away, but the sound obviously carries with the shockwave. So as I said, I'm using a 4.5 millimeter hook. I've got a pair of scissors. You'll use the darning needle, very minimal, which is what I like to hear. So I'm going to pitch this towards a beginner, um, even though it does look quite tricky. And believe me, I know it's tricky because it's, it's um, tripped me up a couple of times on one particular round I seem to mess up. And it annoys me. I designed it. So if I if I mess up, I know anyone can. So what I'm going to do, first off, is a magic loop. Now, a lot of people don't like using the magic loop or they're a bit worried about trying it. It's not hard. Honestly, my way is the easiest way you'll ever see in your life. But if you can't do it, if you really, really can't, then four chain, join it as a, a ring. And then you'll be able to work in that ring. And you can even pull that tight at the end if you want to. But this is so simple, honestly. So what I'm going to leave a nice long tail for sewing it in and securing. You make a loop. So you just simply make a loop. Okay, and you put your hook in that loop. You bring your yarn through and make a chain. Okay, you've done it. That's it. That is the magic loop. Simple as that. No wrapping around fingers or anything. I'll show you one more time because it's so simple. You make a loop. There it is. You put your hook in and you bring your yarn through and you make one chain. And you've done it. Simple as that. So what we're going to do is we do one more chain to bring us up to the height of a UK treble crochet or US double crochet. So that's what we're going to be doing. And we will need a total of eight stitches. These two chain count as our first so we're going to do seven and we're going to yarn over go inside the ring we're going over this kind of knot that you can see and tail pull up a loop yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two i'll show you one more time it's so simple get the yarn out of the way and you're going to yarn over go into the loop yarn over and pull up a loop so you have three on your hook Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So we've got three stitches and we need eight. So we're going to carry on. This is our fourth. If I go ahead of you, then just pause it and catch up with me. It's all the time working over this tail and I think that's seven two three four five six seven last one 
So I've got my eight stitches, including my two chain to start with. Now all I do is get this end and give it a little tug and it pulls it together. I didn't tug it really hard um, because I want you to see these two chain that I started with. Okay, so here's our first and here's our second. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to slip stitch into there. Now, I, when I'm doing my rounds, I try to go into these top loops to slip stitch. But when I'm doing this, I like to go in the top here and just go in like that. And I'll show you for why. So I'm going to just yarn over, pull through there and the loop that's on my hook. And I've joined with a slip stitch. And the reason I like to do that is because you can clearly see by giving it a little tug where you're at. And it's really simple. I only do it on this round. So now I'm going to yarn over and make my two chain, just as we did the start of the previous round. Now that's going to count as my first stitch. And I'm going to do half a corner in this same stitch here. And the reason I'm going to do half a corner is because I like to make my squares seamless. And I'll show you how to do that. It's quite simple, but um, I always do that where I can. So I'm going to do another stitch in the same space, which will complete my half a corner. Now at this point, I usually work over that tail, but I secure it and work over it. Um, but you can, I won't do that with you now because it's quite confusing. So there we are, we've got our half a corner. We're gonna skip the next stitch and we're gonna go into this one. And we're gonna make a full corner, which is obviously our two stitches that we've just done. So two UK trebles or US doubles. And then we're gonna make two chain and two more in the same space. Just go back in. If you can't see what you're doing, you can always pull it and there you are, you can see it. So you're going to go and do two more in that same space. And that is a full corner. And what we're going to repeat all the way around. We're going to skip one. So our next stitch would be there. We're going to go into this one and do another corner. Two chain, two more in there. Okay, so if I show you, it's now getting a little bit of a squareness to it. What started off as a little ring is now a square. Just checking I've got enough yarn out. So I'm going to skip the next stitch and go in this one and do another corner. We're now making our way back to the start. And I'm going to show you how to finish that corner. So here we are, you can see the stitch we've been in is here. And we're gonna do our last two stitches in that same space. Tail's getting in the way, here we go. So we've made our corner, but we need to make this gap. Now, as we have two chain in between our corner, we've got quite a long gap. So I'm not gonna make any chains, I'm going to do a stitch to bridge that gap. Now there's our first chain and our second. So this is a stitch we're gonna go into and I'm going to try and go through these top two loops this time. I'm gonna yarn over and I'm going to go through those top two. It's not very easy sometimes if you've made your chain a bit tight. It becomes a little bit impossible. Well, not if you insist. There you go. So now I'm gonna yarn over and pull up my loop. So I've got three on my hook. And I've just got, if you can't go through those top two loops, just go into the stitches we did before. It doesn't hurt at all. So there we are. I'm going to yarn over and I'm going to go through all three. That's a UK half treble or in the US, a half double. And what that's done is made this space the same size on this corner as it has the others. But it's also put us dead center in the middle of that gap which is what we want. So now we're going to chain two to get up to our height and do the other half, the other stitch to be the half of our corner. So if you didn't go through those two top loops and you went in the same way, this hides it anyway. So don't worry about it too much. But we're going to do one chain 
And now this is our corner and our corner and we've got our side space. We're going to do one stitch only in that space to make a post and another chain. And now we're going to do a full corner in the next corner. That's more or less our repeat now. We've done our corner, one chain, going in this post here, in this space here rather, and our chain, and make our corner in the next corner, next space. If I go too fast, then just pause it and catch up with me. Try not to go racing too far ahead. Just got to pull some more yarn out. Okay, where are we at? I've got to do a chain and go into that space for our post. One more chain and then the corner. I'll stay with you, won't pause it because these are quite quick rounds and so there's not really a lot of point in pausing at this stage but you might want to pause me if I go too fast so I've done my last post and my last chain and we're back for a half corner so again we're going to do our two stitches to finish off that corner and our half treble or sorry half dot yeah half treble or half double in this top one so there we are our first chain here's our second so if you have to go in like that it doesn't matter too much you know it's just personal preference i like to try where i can to go in the top two loops tricky okay so there we go now we're going to be making an elongated v on this round as well and it gets a little trickier. Um, I know it gets a little trickier because I've, I've stumbled at this point myself and I designed it. <laughs> so you need to keep your wits about you on this round. So we're going to chain two and complete our half corner in this part here. And now we're going to go into the stitches from the previous round's corner. So you might want to pull it apart if you can't see where you're going in. This one here is always a little tighter to get into. So we're going to do a stitch in there and in the next one here. And we're going to do a chain, but we don't want it to be baggy, just a small one. Now we're going to work in this post and we're going to do the elongated V in there. So that is one UK treble or US double, followed by two chain and then another one in the same space. So what we've got at the end of that is this V which is elongated. We're going to do our little chain, not our big fat chain, but a little one. And then we're going to go into these two stitches here. And this is where I do get a little bit confused with my own design because you have to now start going into these ones. So we're going to do our corner exactly the same. And once we've done that corner, I will show you what it's looking like. Okay, so just imagine this is a, a full corner and then we've got, we're going into these stitches, we've got a small chain in between, we've got a V and then we're going back around the corner again, remembering to go into these stitches. Now, if you can't see it, just pull it apart a little bit and you it will show you your stitch to go into. I'll show you on this side one more time. A little chain, elongated V in the post. Because we've got that elongated V, we don't want the baggy chain afterwards. We just want it a nice small one. And then we're going to go in these stitches, mustn't forget them, before we uh, do our corner. So that is the repeat. That is the repeat, guys. 
to do a full, a full corner, a small chain, elongated V, small chain, and a full corner. But you must remember to go into these um, stitches from the previous round. So um, I'm going to pause it now. And I'm going to make my way round and I'll catch up with you when I get back to the finish off my other half of the corner. OK, so I've gone all the way round and that's now how it's looking, starting to build up a few more stitches. So I've done my last two in the uh, previous rounds corner and I've got to finish my corner now. So I'm going to do my two stitches in my corner and join it the same way as before by going into here with my UK half treble or half double. There we go. So now it's building up. Okay, so the next round is very easy. We're going to just chain two and we're gonna go in and do our half corner. And once again, we're going to go in all of these stitches in our previous round. I didn't get in there. That's a bit tight. Like I said, the first one's always a bit tighter to get into. I'll put it in. I think going all the way. Really wants to like put me through it today. There we go. And we're going to go in each one of those stitches beneath until we get to our last one there. And we're now working into the V. So no chain, we're going to just go straight in and do five in that V. And it's gonna make a nice little point. Okay, so that's what it's done. It's kind of lifted that. The, the V and these five make this nice little point upwards. So now, no chain. We're just going to go in each of these four stitches from the previous round. Then do our full corner. So it might be easy to get a pad and paper, pad is paper, and pen, I meant to say, pad and pen, and just kind of jot down in your own words what to do each round. And that way you won't have to keep referring back or trying to find um, the points that you need. I'm going to go in one stitch in each of these four next stitches. Last one there. And then five into the V. Remember no chains and just one in each of the next four. then another full corner and then once we've done that corner I'll stop and show you how it's looking okay so now we're, as you can see we're making this what looks like a bracket you know the old-fashioned brackets I quite like that style. That's that, sh that um, the fact that it's pulling up into that V. So that's all we do. This is our repeat. We're going to do our corner, our four stitches, five in our V, four stitches, full corner. And we're going to repeat that all the way around. So go ahead and do that. I'll pause the video and I'll catch up with you when we get back to the corner. Okay, so I'm all the way around. And now square now looks like it's going a bit funny shape and it's getting these points so we're going to bring it back round again now 
I've made my join at my corner. I'm going to do my two chain and my other half the corner. And now this round is not going to look like it belongs in this square at all. And it's going to pucker and that's fully expected. Don't worry about it. We're going to chain three and we're going to go into, um, at, we're going to count three, is it four? One, two, three, four stitches, and we're going to go in between. So if you, when you're looking, it's actually this one. So you've got your V, and you're going in the two either side stitches. So it get, you kind of can see it quite easily. But for now, you just count one, two, three, four, and we're going to do um, a half treble or a half double in between those two stitches. So just like we do at our corner, we're going to do a stitch there, exactly the same, pull through all three stitches. And we're gonna do three chain. And in the middle of our V, which is this one here, so it's one, two, three, we're going to do a UK double, which is a US single crochet. So that's quite simple. Put in your hook, yarn over and pull up a loop. There's two, yarn over, pull through both of them. So we're kind of making this one a little taller than we are this one, because obviously we're going up in a peak here. So we're going to do three chain. Now, if you found, just like I did then, that it curled around the hook and made that hard to do, put your finger on it, okay? So after the V, after this V stitch here, the shell, shall we call it, we're going to count two, and we're going to go in between there. So we're going to yarn over in between there, yarn over and pull up the loop, and you've got them easy on your hook now, as you put your finger on it. Okay, so as you can see, it's puckering a little, but we don't care about that. We're going to chain three, and now we're going to just do our corner as usual. And I know it really should, or looks like it shouldn't work out, but it does. It does work out. So once we've done our corner, we're just going to repeat that all the way along. We're going to do three chain. I'm going to put my finger on there and we're going to count four and we're going to go between the fourth and fifth and do a half treble or half double. So pull through all three. We're going to do three chain and then the top of us, our shell, one, two, three, we're just going to do a single crochet US or a double UK. Three chain. Okay, so once we've gone past, we're gonna count two. We're gonna go in between those two there. Oh, didn't put my arm around my hook. And we've got three on our hook. Yarn over, pull through all three. Three chain. And we're gonna do our corner. And once I've done this corner, I'll stop again and we'll have a look at it. Okay, I'm gonna pull my yarn out. So you see, it's looking like it's not very happy. It's all kind of puckered and sorry for itself and getting a little out of shape. But that is our repeat. It will pull out, don't worry. It's not gonna look like this. So we've got our corner. We've got three chain. We've got a half treble or a half double in our between our fourth and fifth um, of the previous round. Then we've got three chain and we've got one UK double, which is a US single crochet in the middle stitch of our shell. So you count one, two in the third, three chain. And then once we into this section, we count two, we go between the second and third. So we've got four each side. You see it matches exactly. And in between, we've got two past our shell. It's exactly the same, symmetrical. And then we get three chain and our, and our corner. And it is pulling, but don't worry, it's meant to. So just, that's the repeat. So I'm gonna pause the video and I'm gonna carry on all the way round and I'll pick up with you again when we get back to the corner. Okay, so I'm back at the corner. Got my three chain, just going to finish. So it looks a little different, this one, but you can see if you pull it, 
there you are you just got to do your last two in there And we finish our corner off exactly the same way by going into this stitch, our top chain. Okay, so that, that does not look happy, does it? No, it doesn't. It looks very sorry for itself. Now, this is where we pull it back round again. So <clears throat> this is very easy round. We're going to chain two, finish our half corner just as we have done all the way through. And then we're gonna go into these two um, trebles from our previous round or doubles if you're from the US, one in each. And now we've got these spaces. So each of our spaces will have three UK trebles or US doubles. And then we're gonna go into this post okay just one in the post and then we're going to do three in the next space and then we're going to go do one in this stitch here where we joined and we're going to do three in the next space And then one in the post, three in the next space. So we're just now pulling it into the square. And then we're back at the corner. So we're going to do one in each of the previous rounds, two at the corner. And we're gonna make a full corner in our corner. Now remember the next round for me is our last round and it's slightly different at the corner. So just be aware. There's those guns again during the war. Anyway, there we go. It's pulled it out and it's made it happy again. And that's how we're gonna go on all the way around. We're gonna just go in the two stitches from our previous round, three in the spaces, one in the posts and join here. So three, one, three, one, three, one, three, one in each of these two here, full corner and carry on one in each of these two here and just carry on as exactly the same. So as it's um slightly different round, I will stay with you until this corner and then I will pause it and um, meet you at the end. So one in each of these two, that way you'll get to see what a full side will look like with both corners. And we're going to do three in our spaces. If I go ahead of you at any time, as I say before, just pause it and catch up with me. I do tend to gallop on sometimes. And we're gonna go and do one in the post, three in the next space, One in the stitch here. Oops, it fell out. Oh, and again. Urgh. Don't do it again, for goodness sake. And then three in the next space. Slippery on. One in the post. Three in the space. Sometimes I feel it's easier to watch it through a couple of times before you tackle. One in each of these two from the previous corner and then our full corner. Oh, that's more yarn. Just didn't have enough there. Okay, so I'll do my two chain. And my last two of the corner. Whoops. I'll pull that out. And now you can see what that's looking like. It's, it's still keeping this nice little peak, but it's pulling it back round to a square. 
Okay, so what you want you to do then is to go in the two from the previous round of the corners, three in the spaces, one in the posts, and I will catch up with you when we get back to here. Okay, so that's what it looks like. And it's actually a square. You could, if you wanted to, do a small border around there and use that as a perfectly good square. But I do one more round and I like to do this round because it kind of um, just gives you that nicer crisp edge plus it gives you a slightly tighter corner uh, to finish it off. So I'm going to chain the two and do my corner as usual. Okay, so now you're going to pull that across, find that stitch and go into that one. That first stitch is always the tightest. And we're going to do one in each and every stitch along our side. If you wanted to give it a little bit more uh, texture, you could go through the back loops only and you'll get this little ridge on there but I kept it plain but that, if you just went through the back loops then you do get a nice little little line up here so I, I know I'm, I'm kind of not as fast as I normally crochet if I'm just sitting there crocheting I can get up ahead of speed but when you're you've got the camera in front of you you can't really, but um, I know I do steam ahead of some people's um, ability, but if I do, just pause it um, once I get to the end and catch up with me. Because as I said to you before, this round's corner is a little different. Nearly there, got the last one. Okay, so now at the corner. And I will show you why it's slightly different because when I come to do the join, I wanted it to be nice and tight up the top here when I joined it. I didn't want, um, see it's nice and snug. Um, I didn't want a gap and a big V coming down so um this uh just undone it okay right so i've got to do my last one again so this is now onto the corner so we're going to do our two stitches as normal but this time we're just going to put the one stitch in the end like the one chain and then two to finish off the corner so we're still going around the corner but we've only got one, and this really helps with the sewing up. Um, if you didn't do one at all, I think um, it would be harder to find the right one to go into. But if you've got that one chain, you can easily see which stitch you need to start off sewing it together in, which is why I like to put one in that corner. So I had to pull out some more yarn. So if you have to pull that aside to find your first stitch, then do and then just carry on one in each stitch all the way to the corner and do the full corner but instead of two chain we're just going to put the one in from now on nice and simple this round but i just want to get past it a little bit and show you so the corner is now a little tighter and that's what we want so i'm going to pause the video because that's going to be pretty boring watching me do one UK treble or US double in each stitch all the way along. And then once you get to your corner, just remember one chain in between. And I will catch up with you again once we get back to the, well, where I started. Okay, so I'm almost back to the start. And I just wanted to show you the last bit because how we end off is different to how we've done the rest of our corners. Okay, so I'm just approaching my corner, my last one, and there we are. So I have to do my last two in that corner. Now, 
We've only got one chain between them now, so we don't, obviously don't want that big gap. And plus we're ending off, so I'm going to, I want it to be the same. So I'm going to do one chain, and then I'm just going to go into this stitch as normal. Uh, but this time I'm slip stitching into there. And then I'm going to end off. So I need to cut my yarn, nice long tail for sewing in. Because you really want to hide those ends. And one chain and cinch it down, pull it out. And there you are. One finished square. All done. So I hope you like that. And it's quite a versatile square. It's um, You can use this for just about anything that you need to make a granny square for. But do be careful with this. Um, if it starts to come open while you're working, just give it a little tug shut. And what you need to do is make sure you really secure this end. So what I normally do is I get my darning needle. And although it's got a big eye, I do like to scrunch it to put it through. So taking... You can see where that has come out there. I like to just sew this last two and make a loop. And then I take my needle and go through that. I've just pulled it out, Never mind. And make a knot. So that is nice and secure. That's knotted. It's not going to go anywhere, not coming undone at all. Rethread it up again. And then all I'm going to do is work my yarn through uh, this ring. It's not ever going to come undone with that knot. Just burying the tail in there. This is the wrong side, so um, it doesn't really matter, but it's quite invisible anyway. I'm just going to work my way around the ring like that, and then chop it off. And when I do that, I like to pull it slightly so it's the end is inside that ring. And I go as close as I can, snip it off, and then on the other side, perfect, see? And then you can just sew this one in, or I normally do, um, if I'm crocheting together or stitching together in another way, I usually just do these in as I go. But because this is a specific join that I'm using for this particular one, I will sew these ends in um, and I just trace them back through and do them a few times so they stay secure. And that's all you need to do. Sew that end in and make as many of these as you need. So as I said before, if you're making like a cowl, you might need five. If you're doing an infinity scarf, you'll probably need six. If you're making my scarf, you'll need a minimum of about seven. Maybe if you want it longer, eight or nine. So I will leave you then to make your squares and I'll join you again on the joining and I'll show you how to do this, this join. Um, I've looked on YouTube and I can't see anyone else making this join. Whoops, sorry about that. I can't see anybody else making this join at all. So it's a pretty neat one, I have to say. So I'll see you on that one. Thank you for watching. Stay safe, take care. And like I said before, if you haven't already, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell and you'll be informed when the next video is up. Bye for now, everyone.